Uh, what was the last topic we had? Man, so we want to talk about the, the big four, man, from the 2019 rookie class, man, oh, yeah, in terms yeah. of them making this this jump in year two. What's it going to look like? But specifically, who do we anticipate making the bigger jump also? Mm. So we're talking about, obviously, Devin Bush, Deontay Johnson, Justin Lane, and Benny Snell. Those were the four, the top four draft picks in that class. Um, three of those guys saw a ton of action and one guy being Justin Lane didn't see as much action. So with that, man, um, I think for Devin Bush, when I think of that year two jump, what does it look like? Less about the statistical element, but the two things that stand out that I would want to see is him being the green dot guy from a helmet standpoint. Cause we talked about how last year, the green dot on the helmet, for those that don't know, is signal. That's the person that gets the call from the coach. Coach talks to him directly, and he communicates the defense to everybody else that's on the field. He makes all the checks and all those things. So last year, multiple guys had it. So Mark Barron had it for a game or two. TJ White had it for a game. I think Minka wore it for a game. You can only have one person on the defense with it, so it can't be multiple guys having it. And the issue is when you have one guy wearing it, you got to make sure he's out there 100% of the time. Or the majority of the time, because if he's not now, you're screwed. Yeah, now you're having to go hand signals in. The difference is this: I can tell you the call. Hey, Deke, man, we running tight, Sammy thirty three. All right, cool. I hand signal that to you. All right, cool. You going out there, and that's what you're going to run. I can't tell you any other information. If you have the headset on, though, I can say, hey, Deke, we're going to run tight, Sammy thirty three. I want you to look for the China concept on the weak side. If they come out here three by one, look for the dig, and you can say, all right, bet. And now you know that. And now you're good to go. Or if I say, hey, look, man, we're going to run this blitz. Make sure make sure two it knows across the center. Now you can go ahead and tell him, hey, two across the center. But if I'm hand signaling that in there to you because nobody has the mic because the guy with the mic is standing next to me catching breath, <laughs> we stuck. I got to just, all right, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> That's the issue. You know what I mean? So I would love to see Devin Bush be the green dad guy. That's a huge step from a responsibility standpoint, from a communication standpoint as well, man. I think when you wear that green dot too, it, it, it solidifies you as the leader on that defense because everybody has to look to you. It's a big, big issue. So that'd be the first thing that I really want to see. And then the second thing is, man, last year, Mark Barron was taking the lion's share of the coverage in terms of some of those mismatches, some of those things where we were all like, yo, he's always chasing the guy, man. It's tough. It's hard. That's a different element. It's a different animal. But as the roster stands today, that's going to be Devin Bush. Devin's going to be the guy taking those tight ends on, taking some of those slot receivers on. They're not going to ask Vince Williams to do that. So what I want to see from Devin is, okay, you stand up and you excel in that. Don't don't survive. I don't want you surviving. Surviving isn't good. I need you to excel. I need you to thrive in that moment. And it's not easy. And we saw early on. We talked about how he struggled early on. We talked about how yep. like, you could just watch him on tape. He was either overthinking it or just a step slow in some of these situations because it's tough. It's very tough. But that's the, the second part that I want to see from Devin in terms of that year or two. What does that look like? the communication element of it and being able to just excel in coverage, man, because you're going to be asked upon that, especially right now as the roster sits. Okay. Makes sense to me, dude. And my thing was just from a, you know, fans standpoint, I'm sitting back first round pick he played really good last year. He's just going to make a jump. I don't mm -hmm. know what that's going to be, but I think you laid it out yeah. pretty good there. Is there anything else that we could be missing that he could mm -hmm. be doing, whether it's something maybe he was lacking this year or we just saying it was coverage completely. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What what type of things will you be looking for maybe outside of the two things you said? Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's anything else because I, I'm just assuming he's going to yeah. make a jump no matter what. Well, yeah, and like I said, I anticipate him making a jump. I think from a tackling standpoint, just off of the gifts that he's been blessed with, along with the guys that are out there with him, run defense isn't going to be an issue because a lot of times you can get away with, okay, you making a ton of tackles and run defense. You can do that just by the scheme or because you're excelling. Hey, I have this gift where I can be in the A gap, but if you bounce to the C gap, I can run out there and make that play. Devin has that. So I expect him to continue to excel in that. And even worst case, if he's like, yo, I'm messing up, he can always just stay in his gap. And the defense as a whole will be fine because in run defense, it's all about your gap. It's all about your gap. Whereas in coverage, that's that's one on one. That's hey, we're on an island here. Regardless of what the defense is, when I'm in coverage, I can't rely on you, Deke, to make this play for me. I got to make this play. I have to guard this guy. That's why I have a lot more of my uh, my onus and my focus on that element of it. Because, like I said, from a, a run defense standpoint, I expect him to still excel 
in that department. And then we know if him and Vince Williams are out there, Vince is going to be the guy blitzing. So I don't yeah, even yeah. anticipate him blitzing a lot. You know what I mean? Because he's going to be asked to be in a lot more coverage situations. So I think for me, man, that's that's what those two are. They, they, they yeah. are where they are, you know? Yeah, because I think it's just going to happen. I mean, from my perspective, it's going to be Pro Bowl, hopefully. Better be. <laughs> Stats up, and you're just going to be able to see it off the screen and yeah. making some impact plays. I like mm-hmm. you bringing up the whole green dot thing. Did Shazier get that in his yeah, second yeah. year? Yeah, absolutely. Right, and it was so. a big deal because prior to that, Timmons was wearing it, but Timmons was struggling with it because it is a lot. Because you have to think about this, man. When you're on the field, especially at the linebacker position, you're running all over. You get winded. And now, on top of being winded, Coach is trying to talk to you, and he's talking fast. You only got 15 seconds. Now he talks to you. You're still trying to catch your breath. Now I got to communicate it to the defense what the call is on top of, okay, now let me get my keys of what my job is along with, okay, instead of me just knowing, hey, I got the B gap here and I got three, I, I'm, I'm, I'm dropping in the middle of the field on the hook. Nah, this has got to be bigger than that. It's got to be, okay, I already know my assignment. I already communicated the defense. What's the offense lined up in? Oh, they're in two by two. Okay, I'm expecting cross. They're in three by one. Oh, they condense. Okay, they get tight to explode out. So I'm expecting these type of routes. I'm expecting that type of route. That's what you have to get to. But that's hard to do. Why you tired? Why you having to communicate? Why you got that guy on the other side of the field saying, I ain't get the call, man. What's the call? What's the call? What's the call? You over here like, yo, stop. Like, yo, breathe. Just give me a second. I got you. Like, it's a lot that goes into that. So that's why. That that's a big ask of him, but I think he's capable of that. I think he's more than capable of it, and I personally think he's ready for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's yeah. supposed to be the guy for us the next 10, 15 years. Absolutely, the staple of this defense. So absolutely, and, and like you said, man, you're gonna get frustrated. You're gonna go through. We anybody that's one the dot, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It sucks early on, and then you get accustomed to it, and then from there, the guys understand your communication pattern. They they know okay. Once he's getting the call, just give him a second. All right, he's going to tell you this, then he's going to talk to that guy, then he's going to talk to that guy. Everybody does it differently, but once you get a couple of games in, you know. So, like, with Timmons, we knew, okay, man, he's going to struggle sometimes. Like, he might forget the call depending on how much is being said to him. So, he's going to hit you with the – whereas we knew with Shea, Shea going to be like, all right, he get the call. He's going to tell us the call right now while the guy's still talking. He don't care. He's just getting it out. The faster he gets out, he don't have to worry about it no more. But he also knows that, hey, if he don't get that call or something goes wrong, he'll call his own call. And that's what we love because we like, won't have to wait. We won't have to worry about it. Just get us a call right now. And we're good to go. Okay. Everybody is different in that regard. You know what I mean? That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. 